Okay, welcome back. We're in the middle of something of an emergency. Um, there are a lot of problems um, in the land. Hunger is among them. And um, just as we were going away, we were talking, among other things, about, for instance, uh, when that caller called in, um, he had spoken about what is perceived as efforts to uh, frustrate, uh, for example, the, um, you know, the uh, Dangote refinery. And this is coming from you know, a statement by the CEO of the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, Farouk uh, Ahmed, um, you know, the statements that he had made that Dangote had now responded to. Uh, none of this is helping, but what Mr. Farouk Ahmed had done was that nothing could be farther from the truth. This whole notion, this whole idea that, um, you know, the, the refinery uh, was somehow, you know, in the target sites of, um, you know, government uh, to sort of bring it down, discredit it, demarket it, and all of those kind of things. Um, I don't know if you wanted to talk about that particular aspect because this is a thing that, um, although you could say that Farouk Ahmed was speaking on behalf, uh, it was the presidency that released, uh, uh, when I say the presidency, the presidency has a certain office, you know, uh, digital office where they put out information about government generally. That's where that particular statement was first of all seen from. Uh, what do you think, Tunde? Hmm? Okay. Um, I feel that um, the president should do what he did with Central Bank. A private investigator should be employed to look at our oil sector. And uh, because that is the only low-hanging fruit that we have right now, we need to really eradicate oil theft. We need to. I really don't want to double into Dangote, uh, <laughs> Ahmed, uh, in Brooklyn. I mean, because there are issues there. I mean, we're talking about monopoly of uh, commodities and what All somebody of those has done in the past. You. Or somebody is doing yeah. the present. Yeah. Uh, so I really the, don't want to because and the interest of Nigeria. So I really bet. I want to advise. I want to advise the president to set up a private investigator. Set up a private. I mean, to independent. Get, I mean, to appoint a private investigator, independent, just the way he did with Central Bank for the uh, oil okay. sector. He should do the same thing with with the past with the power sector. Honestly. Okay. He should do well, the same Babs, thing because Babs in Lagos with, 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 with CBN actually succeeded. One second, please. Yeah, Babs in Lagos, you've been holding on for a while. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, good morning, Uncle Yuri. Good morning, sir. Thank you for holding on. Go ahead, please. You see, uh, so, some of us that are very staunch supporters of Mr. President are beginning to have a rethink about you know, how this whole thing is going on in the country. We, we supported him because we know what, what he can do. You know, and we're beginning to see that, especially from the presidency angle, you know, uncoordinated um, uh, incidents that's happening. You know, because normally there are things you don't play, you don't play really? politics. You can play for anything, but when it comes to economic policy, food, so I would energize the economy. Whether you're going to step on toes or not, you don't care. Just get it done. So, but I, I, we're beginning to see that even if we cannot come out openly to defend the president anymore because of what actually is, I mean, the whole coordinated, uncoordinated stuff. Look at the Dangote issue. Whether he's monopolizing or not, he's creating jobs in the country. I'm really very angry this morning when I saw the news that they were even offering, he was in the office to sell uh, this uh, refinery to, 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 to NNPC. I don't know. What is wrong with our people to sabotage everywhere? We don't want the people who are bent on not allowing this, uh, that country to work. What the hell is wrong with us as a people? Society is our problem. Everybody just keep doing what about the world and Mr. President is there. I will not tell me he doesn't know what is going on or what he can do about it. Let him, let him just do something because all these protest things people are talking about is all about who are angry and they are looking at him as if okay, we can do something and he's not doing anything. So what do you want them to do? So please, um, Mr. President has the means of hearing us at this moment. Let him just I mean, stick to whatever we want. Let him do whether it's going to work and bring down the food inflation, you know, make the economy work. You are tired of this. You are tired. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Babs, and thank you also for holding on. Uh, Tunde, there you are, you know, the um, viewpoint there that there are some uncoordinated uh, things going on, perhaps, um, you know, that really is confusing. 
Um, the president is supposed to have an overarching view of the entire country. It might not be in the greatest of detail, but um, I, I don't think it's uh, sort of uh, permitted for him not to be totally uh, unaware of certain key aspects. And Hello? this, uh, okay, Trinde, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Hello. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? I Hello. Can, can you, you hear us? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, um, uh, I'll continue speaking just in case you might hear us. It might be a, uh, a touching thing. Any, any better luck? Can you hear? Can you hear anything? If not, we'll take a quick break, uh, see if we can fix it, uh, because there's no, it's not going, nothing is going to happen if you can't hear us. Um, Tunde, can you hear us? Okay, tell you what, I, I, I have another caller uh, on the line. Uh, let me take him, but um, I don't know how much good that is going to do if you can't hear him, so you can't even comment on what he is saying. Uh, but good morning, Mazio Korafo. Yep, Sayori Mazio Korafo, Probado Shukru. Oh dear, what are the systems doing this morning? Um, okay, while we're at it, we're waiting to get Tunde back. Uh, but one of the things that Babs calling out of Lagos, you know, had said was, was that, you can hear now. Okay, let me go back to, uh, thank you, that, thank God for that. Um, let me go back to Babs' call. And uh, Babs was of the opinion that it does appear as if there's so many uh, um, uncoordinated uh, uh, it's loud. things going on, for example, um, and I don't know what you thought about that. I was saying earlier that the president is supposed to have an overarching view of what's going on in the environment, but um, so I, I, don't, I don't know how you see that. Uh, the federal authorities, at least uh, the public interest people, the uh, Nigeria Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, NMDPRA, uh, through its chief executive officer, had said that uh, there was absolutely no truth in the idea that they were trying to frustrate uh, uh, mm -hmm. the Dangote refinery. I know that you had said that you don't really wish to go into that, issues of monopoly or not, but the statements that were made by Farouk uh, Ak Ahmed, you know, brought Dangote out, you know, leave it, and uh, rebutting left, right, and center, and even challenging them that um, stuff that they were putting out there simply wasn't fair. It wasn't even true. And there are those who are now saying that there seems to be a deliberate effort to frustrate uh, the successful uh, launch and running of that um, whole operation. I don't know. It's, it's an elephant right there. I know you said you don't want to talk about it, but it's, it's out there and it's current. And I was trying to go back to a call we had a, a little while back where Babs calling in from Lagos was saying that there seemed to be, in his view, uncoordinated uh, policy thrusts uh, coming out and that that is not helping matters at all. He started off by saying that um, he's uh, forever, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's a supporter of the presidency and the president, but that in recent times, you know, he's beginning to hope that um, he doesn't have a need to rethink. Would you like to take it from there, if you could hear all that I just said? Um... Can I say uncoordinated, or I can say that they are here to bear results? Okay. Because there are two solutions to the problem. There are long-term solutions, and there are short-term solutions. The long-term solutions, we cannot see the results for now, because the gestation period, I mean, is not five months, six months, one year. And like, when Wallace Wenger said, I cannot access, assess the president now, he knew what he was talking about. 28% of the 100% has just been spent, not up to 50%, and you want to, you know, if possible, impeach the president. I would want to urge everyone, fellow Nigerians, to give the president some time. I am not saying you shouldn't do things before 2027. He has to make sure the people are alive to see 2027. If they're not alive before and on 
in 2027, they will not be able to vote him in if he so desires to reconsider. Okay, today, let me try my zero again. Uh, I, two, I, I know I'm interrupting. I'm so sorry about that. But my zero Korafo, we lost him the last time. Good morning, my zero Korafo. Good morning, sir. You got Mazio Korafo. You see, sir, you need. It's one thing Nigeria do understand. It's no how Tom Dick and Harry can do at the same place. It's not possible. Now, ask yourself. When uh, Burari was leaving the office, they said uh, 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 that would be the final would be functional. Nigeria will be very, very happy. Now, look at it. Was it last two months that would tell us an alarm that the foreign companies in Nigeria being managed by foreigners are back up with Nigeria are sabotaging his effort to get crude oil. And that is why he was importing oil from... Uh, U.S. Now, sir, you didn't tell me. The president, Tunubu, I just come down and said, well, stop moving with that good thing. I think he has visited that good thing several times. Another uh, other members have visited that good thing. It's not that it's uh, putting the, 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 the image of that good thing. It's to put the image of that good thing that they're behind. But for people have seen that somewhere. Tell me, what was Nigeria? Back up oil companies from outside country to sabotage that good from getting crude oil. And we're very happy when they said that good is coming to move that the oil is being distributed production. I was expecting that 24 hours crude oil will be coming from right now. Look at the cost of bringing crude oil from outside Nigeria to Nigeria. How much it costs? Now tell me, if this oil, the NMPC people have been selling as they are putting it, the cabals in NMPC are on Nigeria problems. As long as the cabals are still there in NFC, we cannot achieve anything from the oil. I've said it down and back. Okay, Mazi, uh, because of time, I beg your pardon, Mazi, thank you very much. Uh, because of time, I can't take more, but you have said enough for us to work on. And let me just say in relation to that, today you're hearing this as well, you might want to comment on it. Um, all of this is stemming mostly from the recent statements of um, Farouk Ahmed, CEO at the uh, Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority. And um, he said, first of all, that none of that was true. That this, he said it was a campaign in the media. And after he said that, Dangote came out, and I think as late as yesterday, was making statements that he rebutted everything that was being said, and he actually made a case that um, they were painting them black for no reason. Uh, with outright untrue. So that's the situation we have here. Uh, on the one hand, a lot of Nigerians have gotten hold of the idea that the Dangote refinery is being uh, sabotaged. But this, we have got the definitive statement from Mr. Farouk Ahmed that this is not, uh, nothing could be further from the truth. So I guess it is like a lot of things in Nigeria, the way it is, and um, everybody's going to have their own take on the situation. I know, Tunde, you said earlier you don't want to go in there, um, but Mr. Farouk said quite a lot of stuff uh, that um, I think has uh, rattled uh, Mr. Uh, Dangote, so much so that he's even said that, you know what, let, let, let an MPC come and buy me out. And I don't know how you... Let, let them come and buy me out, since everybody's calling, uh, calling me a monopolist, and um, he said it as if... Uh, it probably is, but he said it as if monopolist is a, a dirty word. And uh, it seemed, he seemed quite pained. You saw, you, you saw, you've seen the video. So in addition to all the stuff that we're contending with, uh, with as Nigerians, there is this as well. Tunde, it's over to you. <laughs> Would you believe it? Tunde can't hear me again. Now at this rate, I don't know what we're going to do because I think, I think I just looked at my watch, and I think we have about three minutes or so left. Um, but Tunde was going to talk about um, assessing the uh, stewardship of uh, the president, among the things that he would have wanted to talk about, no doubt, uh, if technology had been a kinder, uh, would have been things like I think he stepped on, he, he, he touched on uh, the collective bargaining and the new minimum wage that we have, uh, he was talking about low. Uh, he was talking about the reform, shall we say, that we're sort of going through in the 
local councils, local government councils, where now direct um, monies will be paid to them, and um, are, are some other kind of reforms that Mr. President is working on. All of this is to better our lot. But today made much of the fact that um, in terms of percentages, he's broken Mr. Uh, President's uh, term so far, the, the duration of his term so far, to 20, just 28% of uh, what he has to spend. And that um, I think he was making the case that uh, there's so much more that can be done. And you can expect, given some of the um, more laudable uh, initiatives that we have seen from Mr. President, there's the whole student's loan thing, uh, ideas that we were all hailing at the time. Uh, but as I said at the beginning, just before Tunde started, all of these, excellent you know, as they are, they tend to be overshadowed by challenges of a difficult living that Nigerians uh, find themselves having to make. It does look as if um, we're not going to get Tunde back, uh, which I apologize for. It's a technical issue. I don't know exactly what the nature of it is. But um, the program, as you know, isn't for me to come and be editorializing here. It's really to hear guests as well as phone-ins on, you know, whatever the topical issue of the day is. So I guess we're going to have to leave it here, uh, lest I become a one-man editorial team.